In the previous section, we created a Symfony 4 JSON API without any dedicated REST or JSON API bundles. And we saw that whilst getting a Symfony API up and running is possible, certain parts were painful or repetitive. In particular here, I'm thinking about things like error processing and display, converting a post or a put or a patch request from raw input to JSON, and also root management, so naming and the correct verbs and restrictions and so on. And that's where bundles come in to help out. In this next section specifically, we're looking at the Friends of Symphony or FOS REST bundle. The plan is to satisfy our BHAT test suite without changing anything in that test suite, if at all possible. And this implementation will be similar, but not identical to the Symphony 4 raw JSON API implementation. So going with the Symphony 4 approach of requiring only what we need, we're going to make use of the Symphony skeleton as our starting point. Now, as a quick heads up, if you do want a more fully featured implementation, then consider the Symphony website skeleton, which as the name suggests, is a configuration more suited to a traditional Symphony based website. But we aren't building a website, we're building an API. This isn't truly restful as it lacks hypertext as the engine of application state, which can be shortened to HATIOS, which is just an acronym I don't like. Anyway, there is a bundle for that and you can find a link in the show notes. And it really depends on how true to the original Roy Fielding REST dissertation you wish to go. For my needs, this setup we're about to implement works absolutely fine. Your needs may be different and that's okay. Please adapt accordingly. So the first thing that we're going to do is install a fresh copy of Symphony 4. I'm going to do this using Composer Create Project, passing in Symphony Skeleton as our starting point, And I'm going to give this the name of Symphony 4 FOS REST API. Now we're going to let the Symphony 4 installation process do its thing. And then once it's finished, we're going to change directory into our new Symphony 4 FOS REST API directory. I'm just going to start by adding everything to Git and committing this as our first or initial commit. Now, because we've used the Symphony skeleton as our starting point, there are a bunch of extra dependencies that we will need immediately. Now, truthfully, these are the sorts of things that you would only normally notice as you start using or trying to use your brand new Symphony installation. Now, as a quick heads up, all of these dependencies are listed in the show notes. You don't need to do them one by one. So let's cover what we'll need and why. Now, Fuzz REST Bundle needs a serializer. A serializer is responsible for turning our objects, in our case, our album entity, into different representations. In our case, this could be JSON or XML. And by using a serializer, we could add extra formats if required. Now there's two supported options for the serializer. We can either use JMS serializer or the Symphony serializer. The JMS serializer is probably the more typically used in my experience. However, it's overkill for our needs. The Symphony serializer is comparable in function unless you have some more advanced needs. And personally, I find it easier to work with. Now you can switch out for JMS serializer if you so desire. We're going to be working with an entity, the album, and we'll want to do all the usual stuff with this entity. So creating new albums and both updating and deleting existing albums. The ORM pack brings in the Doctrine bundle and Doctrine migrations bundle. We don't specifically need the Doctrine migrations bundle here as our setup is really quite simple. However, in real projects, Doctrine migrations are very useful. After adding Doctrine to our Symphony 4 project, we're going to get a couple of extra instructions. One is to modify the database URL config in our .m file, and the other is to configure the driver and server version in the Doctrine.yaml configuration file. Now, as covered in a previous video, I'm going to be using Docker for my database setup. So I'm going to copy the Docker Compose.yaml file and the make file from our BHAT project into our Symphony 4 FOS REST API project. And that's just going to go ahead and quickly get me all the relevant config to get a MySQL instance up and running as fast as possible. If any of this is unclear to you, please watch the BHAT portion of this tutorial where we have covered this in more depth. Now we need to make sure that the database URL environment variable is updated to reflect whatever config we have for our database. Whilst this might sound confusing, it's pretty much just copy pasting the values that you've got in your Docker Compose YAML file into the string under your database URL environment variable. Once we have the Docker Compose file in our project, I can run the make dev command from the make file, which brings up the database according to the configuration that we provided. Now taking a look at the Docker process output here, I can see that I've still got the database running from our raw Symphony 4 JSON API videos. So I'm going to stop that and then remove that container. You may not need to do this. It depends on whether you run the make down command at the end of the last section. Next, I'm going to compose a require the Symphony validator. Now, as we covered in the previous section, we do have some validation requirements on our album entity. We won't accept a blank or empty string for our title, for example. 
and also we need a track count that is one or greater. Validation is going to be triggered when our data passes through Symphony's form component. So with that in mind, we'd better compose a require Symphony form. Much like in many a typical web application, we will be handling incoming user data. And even though we won't have a HTML representation for our form, at least not just yet, the process is the same as if we did. The form component doesn't care where our data originally comes from. It could be hard coded, it could be a typical HTML form submission, such as application XWWW URL encoded, or it could be JSON, like in our case. By the time we pass the submitted data into the form, it will have been converted to an array anyway. Now, although this code has lost its nice coloring like we'd see in PHP Storm, if you remember back to our previous implementation, we did have to take care of this transformation process ourselves, where we were running our request to get content through a JSON decode function. This is such a common occurrence, we had to do it for post, put and patch, that the FOS REST bundle offers a built-in and implicitly enabled listener to do this process for us. Now we'll cover this again in our post implementation. For now, all we need to do is a composer require on the Friends of Symphony REST bundle. The FOS REST bundle comes with a Symphony Flex recipe to add in some very basic configuration for us. And after running this command, we will have a new and interesting bit of configuration, which we can find at config packages fosrest.yaml. And again, we'll come back to this shortly. Now, as the FOS REST bundle is a third party or contrib recipe, we have to explicitly allow execution of the flex recipe. Don't be alarmed by this. All recipes are reviewed, so it's highly unlikely that any of them are going to do anything malicious. And here you can see the FOS REST YAML file, which we will come back to in more detail throughout this series. Now these next few requirements are what I would consider to be optional dependencies. And for these, I'm gonna show the alternative syntax, which you can find if you browse to symphony.sh or the Symphony Recipes server. And where appropriate, you'll find packages also have aliases. And an alias is just a short form name for another package. So for example, composer require annotation is exactly the same as composer require sensio slash framework dash extra dash bundle. Now, in the case of Composer Require Annotation, the alias actually gives away more than the full package name. We will use annotations to describe our health check endpoint. You don't need to. We're just going to use this as an opportunity to explore FOSREST Bundle's useful features a bit further. Again, just to show different syntax, I'm going to run the Composer Require for our three optional dependencies in one statement. We already covered why we need to handle cores in a previous video, so if at all unsure, please see the show notes for a link. The gist being that if our API is on a different domain, even a subdomain, or just a different port to that of our front-end code, then we're going to encounter cross-origin resource sharing or cores issues. And this bundle takes care of this problem for us. The key change is to update the cores allow origin environment variable, which will have been newly added to our .env file. Being able to write to log files is super useful, whether in development or production. But sticking with the streamlined super minimal approach, the Symphony skeleton only includes a basic logger. Monolog is the default go-to for Symphony projects. So installing Monolog means important and useful debug information is going to be available in our var log directory. Now I have three more optional dependencies. This is the maker bundle, the profiler and the web server. These three dependencies will only be used during development, so I'm running the composer require with the dash dash dev flag, which will add these into my required dev section of the composer.json file. The maker bundle simplifies creating new controllers and entities and forms and so on. It's really useful if you're lazy, like me, and you don't like typing lots of boilerplate. The profiler is going to add a new endpoint, that's slash underscore profiler, which can be very useful to figure out what the heck went wrong with any of your previous requests. I use it all the time. Now you don't need the profiler, it's a nice visual tool, but you can get by with just the log files. Finally, the Symphony web server bundle gives us a nicer user experience over the built-in PHP web server. It's entirely optional, you can just use the built-in PHP web server if you're comfortable with its syntax.